The church was never created to be a building where people gather or a place that people come to. The church was designed to be a living, breathing organism full of a connected community and filled with the life flow of God's Spirit. The church is where His people are. The church is where you are, in your bedroom, your living room, at work, on the street. Will you be the church? What's up, City Life? We got something amazing that is going down literally right now, and you have to hear about it. We're here at Hope in the Valley distributing masks for those in the homeless shelters. Oh yeah, we gotta see this right here. How many do we have? We have 200 masks. Oh, that's so awesome. And uh, thank you, church. Thank you for everyone that donated from their finances to their time to make this a reality. We thank you so much. You guys are making an amazing impact in our community. That is so, so true. And uh, just a reminder, we are making progress on this. Our goal is 1,000 masks given away, and we're now up to three or 400 that have been given away. A whole lot that have been made. So if you wanna help out, continue to give, continue to support, because we're on our way there. God bless you guys.
are a great God. You are a powerful and mighty God, and yet you know us by name, Father. So in this moment, we just lift up our praises to you, Jesus, because you and you alone are worthy.
What is up, City Life? So great to see all of you today. What a great day to be together. And, and man, it, it has been amazing being together um, and, and seeing you. Well, no, no, I'm not really seeing you. You're seeing me, but, but I see you, you know, in my head. I, I see you right now. I'm looking at you right now. And it is so great to have you. We have literally had hundreds of families, hundreds of of people uh, joining us for our services online. And we are so thankful and grateful that you are joining together with us. In fact, um, I, I got to pull out the list, but we, we have people from California, Nevada, Oregon, Texas, Florida, Nebraska, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and also countries like Argentina, Guatemala, Mexico, El Salvador. We have had people watching us from all over the place, and we are so grateful and thankful that you are with us. Us man, what a great time to be alive! And and also, um, I, I want to thank all of you that came and joined us for our family Zoom night on Friday. We had an awesome time together, and um, we heard testimony after testimony of how God is showing up and doing literal miracles, miracles of supernatural provision, miracles of supernatural healing. Miracles of salvation. We're seeing people say yes to Jesus like never before. It is a great season where God is doing amazing, amazing things. And I'm so thankful for that. And I, and I want to invite you to do something right now. Pull out your camera, your cell phone camera, whatever you use. And I want you to take a selfie of you guys with me in the background. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting. Got it? Yeah? Yeah? You good? Okay. So here's what I want you to do. With that picture, I want you to do uh, one thing with it, but in different ways. You can uh, put it, post it on Instagram, tagging our church at City Life LA. Put it on Facebook. Also tag the church, City Life Church. Uh, you can uh, send it by email to us, info at citylifela.org. And we are going to take those and they will make their way possibly into our service next Sunday. So do it and you just might show up in one of our services. Wouldn't that be amazing? You'll be famous for the whole world. <laughs> I'm messing around. All right. So, so go ahead and do that. And one other thing I want to do before I get into the message, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to give for continuing to be generous. Uh, we still have to pay rent for our building. We still have to meet our obligations. And, and you as a church have continued to be faithful. And we have continued as a church to reach out and bless. Um, this week, as you already saw in a video just a couple minutes ago, we, um, we blessed Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission with 200 masks. And we are on our way. I, I think we've given out, I don't know, somewhere around four to 500. We are on our way to 1,000 and masks being made and given away because of your generosity. Whether you're giving financially to it or you're helping to make the masks, whatever it is, thank you for your generosity. We're so grateful for you. And today I'm going to be finishing up our series called Safe Space. We're going to start a new series next week. We'll be announcing it on social media during the week. So get ready for that. Um, but, but I want to finish it off, and I'm calling this one Perfect Prisons. You heard me right. Perfect Prisons. Many times, the prisons of life are the exact location that God uses to prepare us and perfect us. It is the safest place to be when there is limitations, and God is in the middle of it because He wants to do something uh, amazing in our lives. And, and I want to share with you the story of Joseph. Now, Joseph was a young man who was the favored and favorite son of his father. His father, Jacob, loved Joseph, gave him all types of benefits and blessings, and it was amazing. And so Joseph he, he, he ended up uh, believing by two dreams that he got from God that he was going to be, you know, really high up, a man of power and authority. And so he, of course, like a young person and a little bit of pride and arrogance, goes and shares it with his brothers and his parents, says, I'm going to be in charge of all of you. And, uh, and his brothers got even more jealous of him, and they ended up selling Joseph 
as a slave. His brothers sold him as a slave. And then after that, he got into a difficult situation as a slave in the land of Egypt. And the, the wife of Potiphar, the, the man he was a, a slave for, a slave with, accused Joseph falsely. And because of the false accusation, Potiphar ends up throwing Joseph into prison. But the story is so amazing because God works in Joseph's life in amazing ways. And then Joseph ends up as the second in command to Pharaoh in Egypt. Wow. I mean, what an incredible story. And so what I want to share with you is found in Genesis 39, verses 19 to 23. And it says this, Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. Again, a completely false story. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, verse 22, the warden put everything, put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Joseph, you see, ended up with a limitation in his life. You know, it makes me think about this season that we are in right now and how the reality is, is that in this season of of COVID-19, where we feel like there's a lot of limitations in our life, right? We're we're stuck at home with the stay at home orders. And this morning I I drove to a Dunkin Donuts and and, and I get there and I'm like, I'm in the drive through. I want a cold brew. I love cold brew. And they said, I'm sorry, we don't have any. What type of limitation is that, right? Man, they're just ruining my life. And then they say, when you show up to the window, you got to be wearing your mask. Another limitation, right? Okay, follow the rules, that's fine. But but so often, we we get stuck with these limitations in life. and, And we do something... But in fact, this is actually kind of our nature that we do this. And, and I want you to, to, to see what we do. You see, we get these limitations in life, these prisons of life, and we actually limit ourselves even more. Well, we take the limitation that has been imposed on us and we say, well, there's nothing I can do. And we just kind of throw up our arms and we say, I oh, just forget it. Why even bother? And we actually limit ourselves even more than the limitation of the circumstance. And I want to encourage you in this season that you would take the limitations of life, but you would choose to extend yourself to every edge and every corner of the limitation. And and those limitations are so important for you and for me, so extremely important because God places those limitations in in your life. And and watch this, I, I want you to capture this. He places them in your life in order to form you and transform you. And so Joseph being inside of prison was learning how to trust God. He was learning how to obey God. He was learning how to lean into God in the midst of that situation. And what incredible lessons that Joseph was learning during that season. You know, actually, I I, I think about his name. Joseph's name literally means this, Jehovah or God has added. God has added. And, And what his name originally meant for his father, for Jacob, was that Joseph had been added on as an extra blessing to his father's life. And so that's why his father named him that way, because he was, he was added on. He was this added blessing. And that's also why his father favored him as well. And so Joseph was this added blessing. But so interesting that Joseph's story was one where he was taken away from his father. And in Joseph's case, everything was taken away from him. 
I mean, in fact, looking at his life, you would say, instead of God adding, God was taking away. Joseph lost his prosperity. He lost his family. He lost, in his own mind, his future. It was all taken away when he was sent as a slave and then eventually thrown into prison. And can you imagine year after year after year being in prison? Oh, sure, he was the favorite one of the warden, but he was still in prison, and he had to put up with that year after year after year. Now, I I don't know about you, but eventually I would end up probably discouraged and just thinking, what's the point? I'm stuck in prison. Why would I try to do my best here? But Joseph decided that in every way and in every place, he would live his life for God. He would live his life to the max. He would choose to invite God into the place where he was. And you know what? God added things to his life in that prison. God added favor. God added character. God added his presence. In fact, um, let me me just say this um, one more time because it, it literally says this right here in verse 23. It says, the Lord was with him in prison. And it also says in verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph in the prison. Did you see that? Two times it says that the Lord was with him. So while God removed all of the external things, God added to Joseph his faithful love and his presence. And Joseph learned what it meant to be a person that leaned on God for everything that he had, not leaning on on his blessings, not leaning on his family, not leaning on money, on resources, on being the favored person. He chose to lean into God and to lean on God. And, And his prison turned into the perfect place for him to be. And in fact, I, I, I want you to see this because if you take a look at Joseph's life, it, you, you would go, okay, so, so he starts out as the favored son and then he becomes a slave. But at least as a slave, he still had, you know, good food, I think. And, and, and he was not free, free, but he was free to kind of move around and walk around. And, and so he goes from the favored son to a slave to prison. If you look at that, the trajectory of life of his life is straight downhill. And how often do we give up when we see the trajectory going like that? But what Joseph understood was that that trajectory was his slingshot to his destiny. I hope you got that. His trajectory backwards was the slingshot to launch him forward into his destiny. And when everything went back and back and back, there was, being, there was more tension pulled onto those ropes, onto those cords, and that tension was preparing to launch him forward into what God had for him. And in fact, Joseph did not go from prison, from that far back point, to just an inch forward or a, or a foot forward. He didn't just go and, and start to grow a little bit like this. No, no, no. Joseph actually went straight from the furthest point in the back or the furthest down point, he went straight from that to the second in command right behind Pharaoh. He skipped every other level, every other role, every other title, every other position and went straight from the bottom to the top. Because when you trust God, you can be in that slingshot being pulled back and that might be the position of your life right now and you have a choice to make You have a choice to either just fall to the ground and say this is pointless and to give up or to stay in the slingshot and to trust God that in the backwards movement, he is setting you up to launch you into the blessing that he has for you. So prison was the perfect place to be. It was the safest place to be because God was going to take him from there to the palace, from prison to the palace. And so would you choose to trust God? And so what happened is that God took away everything so that way Joseph would just depend and rely on God for all he needed. But then what did God do later? 
he threw him off of that sling, launched him forward, and Joseph received everything he had before and more. He received position, title, influence, riches. He was reunited with his father, with his brothers. He realized he had another brother, a new brother that he never had before. He, he got a wife. He had kids. And God blessed him more than anything he could ever imagine. And so would you choose to trust that your limitation can be your liberation. Your incarceration can be your freedom in life if you would allow God to use it in that way. So whatever place that you feel that you are stuck in, don't limit yourself further by um, your attitudes or your discouragement or any of those other types of things. Choose to say, okay, God, here are the limits that I am confined in, but here's what I'm going to do. I am going to test the edge of these limits, the corners of these limits, and I'm going to take advantage of every inch of space that I have inside of here, trusting that God is going to launch me forward in the future. And when you lean on God in your prison, in your limitations, when you trust him, when you live to the maximum every opportunity inside of your limitation, then God will be able to trust you when he opens up those walls because you will then leverage the greater opportunities for the purposes of God. And so do you trust God enough to work in your life in this space that you are in right now and trust him to set you up for the future of blessing that he has for you? My friends, this is what God wants to do with us in the prisons of life. He did it for Joseph, and he can do it for you. Would you allow prisons, your prisons, your limitations, to become your safe space, a place where God shows up in a mighty way, changing you, transforming you, molding you, shaping you, and setting you up to launch you into his purposes and plans for your life? Let me pray for you today. Jesus, we are so, so grateful to you. You have been so good to us. And God, I pray today that you would, by your grace, impact every single person that has been listening right now and watching. And Lord God, that they would be blessed by you to understand that they can lean on you and trust you for every circumstance, for everything that they go through. Jesus, do that in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to do one other prayer with an invitation. If you are watching today and you have never said yes to Jesus, maybe you have blamed God for your limitations, for your prisons, for the hard things that you're going through without realizing that those are tools that God uses for your life. And that today you would say, you know what? I want to, I want to actually take a step of faith. I want to choose to, instead of fighting against God, I want to place my life into the hands of God and trust that he will use every circumstance to accomplish his perfect plan in my life. And if you want to say yes to Jesus, then, then right now, even under your breath, if you want to do it, just, just say yes right now. Just say it. Say yes. And, and God is doing something new and he is coming into your life. And I want to pray for you if that's you. Jesus, may you bless each and every person that is saying yes right now, that as they choose to step into relationship with you, you will step into their lives and overwhelm them with your amazing grace, with your incredible abundant life. And today will be a new day for each and every one of them. I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to celebrate you, with you for saying yes to Jesus. And also I want to encourage you to do so by saying yes. Um, you have entered into new life with Jesus. I, I want to encourage you to do one quick thing. We are going to, uh, we're right in the comments on Facebook or YouTube on our website. Go in there and just say, I said yes. And we'll have somebody there that will say, amazing. God bless you. 
And then one more thing you can do is we're going to place a link inside of the comments right now where you can click on that link. It'll take you to an online connect card and you can fill that out. Super simple. You just tell us your name, your email, where you're from, phone number if you want to, not a requirement. We won't spam you. That is not the goal. But our goal is to just be in connection with you and to serve you as you walk forward with Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. We had a good time together. I, I hope you had a good time with me right now. Um, real quick, just so you know, we we're starting some new Facebook Live events called Be The Talks. Vida meaning life, so life talks. And we're going to be talking and interviewing different people and just talking about real issues of life. So be paying attention to social media, Instagram, Facebook. We'll be announcing it and what's going on. As I said before, also pay attention because we start a new series next week. We'll let you know what it is during the week. And lastly, um, every single day, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in Spanish in the morning, 7.30 in English, we join together for prayer on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash city life LA. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have a little video with uh, um, connection information, and then we'll go into a, a digital blessing for you guys today. God bless you guys. It's so great being with you.